<laughs> hello, 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 everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome. <laughs> All right, we're just going to give a few minutes so that everybody can log in. Thank you so much for your patience. We do really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Lily Rockstar. You guys are rock stars. Thank you um, for giving me room uh, to get off work and uh, to be here. I do not take it lightly that you've given me permission this evening uh, to be here. All righty. We're excited. A very good evening to you. My name is Rorusang Tandekiso. I've been saying my name the entire day. The entire day. I'm your host, Rorusang Tandekiso. So I'm saying it for the last time tonight. Good evening. <laughs> uh, my name is Rorusang Tandekiso. I am one of... Um, the family members here at Jesus This Jesus, that we are a fun-loving, Jesus-loving, you know, group of individuals who just want to go where God is sending us. And it is a privilege that we get to connect with you every single week in this manner. And tonight is absolutely no different. So we thank you, um, the team, the leadership. We thank you so much for allowing us to, to be here today and um, uh, to shift our times flies to shift our times to 8 p.m we usually meet at 7 p.m under very whatever circumstances uh, you know we try our very best not to move the times but you know if the situation doesn't allow us then we will um always just try to see how we accommodate it the aim is never to cancel um in the one year that we've had bible study um we've never missed we've missed flights <laughs> we've missed <laughs> many things but uh we have somehow managed to to meet um every single thursday um for close to a year so we just want to give god the praise and the glory um and the opportunity you know and and i say it always um even to some of the production companies or the people that i work with um for always having an understanding heart you know um, it's one thing to get to work and then go, guys, I've got to, I've got to go, you know, and you see everybody work together to sort of allow me this room to, to run back and be here on a Thursday. I really am grateful to, to the people who permit and, and really create space for me to be me. And, um, yeah, and to the team, uh, for always having my back. Um, you know, they get all my frantic messages. Like, I don't think we're going to finish. So, um, I just want to appreciate them and just thank God for them. All righty. We're gathering here today. I know a few people will join us as we go. If there's somebody who's usually here, maybe didn't even get the time um, correct tonight, and um, you can spot that they're not here, I want you to go ahead and, you know, tag them, invite them, send them a message, um, and tell them to come and join us. If you are new here, welcome to Jesus is Jesus That. We are grateful that you're here. You are our answered prayer. We pray about you weekly that, Lord, send us uh, people, send us like-minded people, send us workers, people who will go out and take your word and run with it. We're excited. We continue to pray for you um, and want you to prosper. All righty, I want us to get straight into it. I'm not going to keep you too long, um, Possibly because I know it's the long weekend and everybody's going to get into their own things. And there's so much word that a lot of us are going to be getting throughout this weekend. Um, I'm also still at work, so I, I, well, I didn't get the chance to leave. So um, I don't want them to lock me in here. So And I also want to just respect that they need to go. So I'm going to try to be as concise as possible tonight. And just allow God to speak as he wills. Alrighty, this is who we are, it's what we do. We take the opportunity to speak a good word over people. What do we mean by a good word? To speak the word of God over people, right? Sometimes you don't know what to say to someone. You don't know what to pray for them. You don't know the situations that they're going through. That's never a reason why you don't open up your mouth and speak God's goodness over them. What do we mean? We speak the word of God as it is. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and pick a friend. There's about 4,300 of us um, right now on this live. I just want you to scroll, pick somebody's name. If you can, it's not really a must. It's not uh, compulsory. 
uh, or mandated that you do, but I want you to scroll and find a friend this evening. Scroll and find somebody here, um, or maybe it's a friend of yours, it's somebody you've been thinking about, it's somebody you've been praying for th throughout the week. I want you to go ahead and just pick someone today and pray for them. It feels so good to know that somebody's standing in prayer with you, so if you can, tag them, send them a DM and let them know that you're praying with them. Trust me, it goes a long way. We're going to just pray. We're going to open up with maybe just two minutes of just speaking God's goodness over them. Are we ready to do that? Let's do that tonight. Father, we thank you for our friends and family. We thank you, Lord God, for this community of individuals. Lord God, Jesus this, Jesus that. Lord God, we thank you that we were able to connect. Lord God, we know that it's not our regular time, but look, there's so many of us here, Lord God, and we know that you still have a word for us. Mudimwaka, here's the person that I'm praying for. Come on, I want you to say their name um, and pray for them tonight. I pray for this person, Lord God. I pray that you will bless them. Mudimwaka, as they go into this long weekend, as people are traveling, people are seeing their loved ones. Others are not traveling, are not seeing their loved ones. Lord God, our people are feeling down. Others are feeling discouraged. Others are heartbroken. They're mourning. There's a loss. You know, there's rejection. There's betrayal. Lord God, whatever situation that they may find themselves in, we want to speak your word. We want to speak your peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding. We want to speak your loving embrace. Lord God, the God who knows how to fetch us no matter where we are. We just want to speak your goodness over them. We pray, Lord God, that you strengthen them. You cover them. You enlarge them, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, come. Some some people have had a long week. They've had a tough time. You know, they, they, they're dreading the next couple of days. They're dreading the situation that they're going to find themselves with. They prefer to be waking up in the morning to go to work because the situation at home is not the best and the most ideal. I want you to take time out to pray for them this evening, to say, Father, wherever that they may be, we pray for their families. We pray for their children, Lord God. We pray for provision. Others are worried, Lord God, that it's month end and the numbers are not coming together. Where's the provision going to go to? What are the kids going to eat? Lord God, where's the money for this going to come from we just want to speak and declare lord god that you are our provider you're the one that we lean on mudimaka show yourself as god mapilonga even today in the mighty name of jesus go ahead and pray for somebody who's not feeling well it may not be them but it could be a family member father we just pray that anybody who's experiencing sickness and weariness in whatever state be it mind body lord god be it the internal the external father god we just speak your grace over them your healing power over them we cover them with the blood of jesus in the mighty name of jesus we declare lord god that it is well with them in jesus name I want to encourage you that you do this as regularly as you can. Make it who you are. Make it a part of your everyday. That, Father, I will participate. I will open up my mouth and I will exercise this privilege that you've given me. That I can stand in the gap for someone. That I can stand in agreement for someone. That, Lord God, that I can open up my mouth and, God, you can hear me on their behalf. Take it as a privilege that, oh, God, who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you will hear me when I pray? pray for Larato. Who am I that you will hear me when I stand in agreement for my mother? Who am I that you would be aware of me when I cry out for my sister? Exercise that privilege that God has given you even tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Alrighty. I know it's a bit late. I don't want to keep you. I do want us to get straight into it. If you do follow on Instagram, you'll see that I put up a picture of a donkey. I saw some of you guys were trying to figure out what it is that we're speaking about today. There's so many gems in this part of scripture that we're going to be delving in. I want to encourage you to pull out your Bibles, your notepads, your notebooks, um, uh, your colored pens, whatever situation that it is. I always encourage you to buy the old school exercise books so that you can make those notes, write the scriptures particularly on a Friday morning. There's so many parts of scripture that we give and there's no way you're capturing all of them. Write them down in your own time. Go over them. What the Lord will reveal to us, he will not withhold and not reveal to you. Even when you go to church, don't be the person who goes, ah, I've got photographic memory. If it appears on screen, I'll never forget it. No, it's not photographic. Write down, go back. Go study, read, right? Even this weekend, as many services, conferences are taking place, don't take for granted 
the writing down and capturing so that you can go back. It's not there so that you can say, I've got 27 books that were filled in 2024. No, it's there so that you can go back and go read the word, go search the scriptures for yourself. The Bible says, study the word to show yourself approved. It doesn't stop there. It says, study the word to show yourself approved to God. So you don't study the word to show yourself approved to us. You don't cram verses to show us that you are good at what you're doing. No, babes. We are, we are, we are, we are far too low. <laughs> Study the word to show yourself approved to God. Right? That you have an understanding. That you want to apply this word in your life. So we want to encourage you to go ahead and do that. Alrighty. We're going to get straight into it. We're looking at Numbers 22. Numbers 22. I love this part of scripture. Balaam. Um, is an interesting character, so many things. And I think throughout the year would look at uh, just bits of part of him and, and just some, some great learnings that we can take out. Today, we're specifically looking at Numbers 22 from verse 21. It's Balaam's uh, a, a donkey, right? That's why I put up a picture of a donkey. And 21 says, verse 21, we'll take it from verse 21. It says, <clears throat> Verse 21 says, Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moabite officials. Verse 22. But the Bible says, but God was very angry when he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding his donkey and his two servants were with him. Verse 23, when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road and into the field. Balaam beat it up to get it back onto the road. Verse 24 says, Then the angel of the Lord stood in the narrow path of the vineyard with the walls on both sides. Verse 25, When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's leg or foot against it. So he beat the donkey up again. Verse 26 then the angel of the Lord moved ahead and stood in the narrow place where there was no room to turn, neither left or right. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down under Balaam. And he was angry once again and took his stuff and beat the donkey. Hey, it's mosquitoes. We're reading the word of the Lord now. Don't be nuisances. Uh, the Bible says that he lay down underneath Balaam and he was angry and he beat him with his staff. This is the donkey. Verse 20, 28. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth and it said to Balaam, what have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Verse 29. Balaam answered the donkey says, you have made me a fool or you have made a fool out of me. If only I had a sword. I want somebody to underline that in my hand. I would kill you right now. Verse 30, the donkey said to Balaam, I, am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I ever displayed such habit to you? Balaam responds and says, no, actually, honestly, you have not. Then verse 31, then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. And he saw the angels of the Lord standing in the road with the sword drawn. The Bible says he bowed low. And fell face down. Then the angel spoke to him says, why have you beaten up your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because of your path is reckless before me. Verse 33, the donkey saw me and it turned away from these from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would have certainly killed you by now. But I would have spared the donkey. Numbers 22. Numbers 22. Verse 21. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you for allowing us to see your word and for us to learn. Your word tells us that it is a mirror. If we read it and we forget it, it's like us looking in the mirror and forgetting what we look like. May we not forget May we grasp the revelation you have in store for us tonight. In the mighty name 
of Jesus Christ. If you're looking for a heading, see what the donkey saw. Don't say what it said. I don't even know if that's correct English, but what I'm trying to place emphasis on tonight is that it's important that we see what the donkey saw. It's important that we take note of what the donkey saw. It's important that our walk with God should always be from a perception or from a stand view of where the donkey was having his experience. It's important to see what the donkey saw. If you're taking notes, verse 21, I'm quickly going to run through it because I really want to land somewhere tonight and spend some time there. It tells us that he got up in the morning and he settled the donkey and he went with officials. Verse 22, but God was very angry with where he went and the angel of the Lord stood in opposing. Maybe if you're writing notes, take this down under verse 21. He got up in the morning and he settled the donkey. Most of us don't want to admit that we prepare and plan disobedience. We don't want to have the real conversation that we work out how to disobey God. We, we don't want to speak the truth that we work out our sin instead of working out our salvation. That we very much know how to wake up in the morning conscious of God's heart and completely plan our day to do the opposite. He, he woke up. He settled up. He was prepared. He prepared himself for a journey that God disapproved of. Be careful what you do with your morning and how you settle up. We've got to be careful that when we wake up in the morning, it's to pursue him. That when we settle up to get onto journeys, it's on routes and roads and journeys that he has sent us on. It's no purpose with you going in a direction that angers God, hurts God, betrays God, and moves you away from God. Watch what you settle up. Movement doesn't always mean it's in the direction of God. We've got to tell the truth that sometimes, not always, we are very well prepared and well planned to take a journey in the opposite direction of where God has sent us. I was just passing by. Verse 22 says, but God was angry at where he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. I want to stay here. In fact, I'm not going to stay. I'm going to glance over. And maybe let me put it like this. Just because God affords you free will. Ooh, hope somebody catches me here today. Just because God affords you free will. I'll say it for the third time. Just because God affords you free will. It does not mean he approves of the behavior. Just because you're settling up. Just because you've started a journey with a group of people, in this case, he was with the Moabite officials, just because you're in the direction that you're going in, it does not mean that God approves of your behavior. Does not mean that God approves of the direction. Some of you, if God didn't want it, he wouldn't have allowed it to happen. And you know very well when you say that it's got nothing to do with God, it's got everything to do with you justifying that because there's some permissibleness or room for you to do it, you know, God would have struck lightning by now to stop you. No, he gives you free will. He says, I place before you life and death. You have the option to choose. He suggests and says, not even suggests, he highly recommends that you choose life and tells you what life is. But don't think because... You're still able to saddle up that God is approving. Don't, don't take your ability to settle up as God's approval. Don't, don't take your ability to sleep with that person as God's approval. Don't take their ability to take that bribe and to pay off this one and to sneak behind that one as God's approval. Don't take your laziness to study and to apply yourself as God's approval. Don't take your disrespect to your partner and your spouse as God's approval. Don't take your lack of commitment to the things of God as God's God's approval. Don't take God for a fool. He can not be mocked. He will not be mocked. The Bible tells us in verse 22 that God is angered by this and he sends the angel to stand and oppose him. Watch. Even though the angel is there to oppose him, 
him and the guys are able to move swiftly through. So don't make the mistake of the progress, the money, mm, the fame, the, 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 the status confuse you to thinking you're going somewhere when in actual fact, God and his angels are opposing the journey you're going on. See, what God was opposing here was that what he was about to do was directly impacting God's people. Be careful that you're on the right side of the battle line. I got to move. Verse 23, and this is where I'm going to spend most of the night is, is, is we read it. I actually want to read it aloud. When the donkey saw, I want you to highlight it in the brightest highlighter or circle it. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, the Bible tells us that it responded to seeing the angel of the Lord. The Bible tells us that it was a normal day. It was a normal morning. It was being saddled like it's usually being saddled. You, you later see that the donkey even has a conversation with him to show you that, hey, dear friend, I've done many journeys with you, but it's when the donkey saw that the ordinary relationship it had with this master had to change because it encountered something that had greater authority than its master. Getting ahead of myself. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in its hand, it turned. Watch, the donkey did what God expected Balaam to do. The Bible says it turned off the road and went into the field. It tells us that he collected the, the donkey, he beat it up to get it back to the road. We're going to stay here for a little bit. The revelation of the donkey causes the donkey to behave in a way that is unordinary or is extraordinary or is not the everyday behavior. He, he, he encounters and he sees, the Bible says he saw the angel of the law. What was his master no longer became his master. What was the direction he was going through or in no longer was the direction he was going through. What was the instruction from this one? No longer was the instruction. The donkey saw its owner. The disciples say when Jesus speaks to the winds and the waves, what manner of man is this that the winds and the waves obey him? Creation obeys him. God sends his angel. And the donkey has a revelation Woo! that authorities have shifted in this place. The atmosphere is no longer the same. Write this down when you're taking notes. Revelation will always give clarity on where the authority is coming from. Revelation will always give clarity on where the authority is coming from. When you have a revelation of God, you know that sickness can't rule. When you have a revelation of God, you know that demonic powers can't rule. When you have a revelation of God, you know that brokenness or lack can't rule. When you have a revelation of God, you know that the little things that are blocking your way don't have power over your life. When you have a revelation of who God is, you understand where the authority comes from. A lot of us are living below the line. Why? Because we're not clear about where the authority sits in our life. We're not clear about who the ruler is. We're not clear who we belong to. We're not clear who this maker is. Yes, your boss is your boss. But when God comes in the room, I don't know you. I'm going to turn around. Yes. Your bills are your bills, but when God comes in the room, you're the least of my problems. Yes. The degree is the hardest thing I'm dealing with right now in my life. If I can only just get through this honors, this, this, this MBA, if I can. Yes, but when God comes in the room, I understand heaven and earth's authority has come in place. What is a degree? What is a job? What is money? What is a house and car? The authority has arrived. 
The Bible tells us that the donkey turns around. See, when you encounter him, things don't stay the same. When you encounter him, your life doesn't just continue all willy-nilly the same. It's no wonder the Bible tells us that once we've received him and we've allowed him as our personal Lord and Savior, once we have left the old and we have come into the new, that we are as good as new creatures, the Bible says. And life can never go back to how it used to be when you've encountered him. The direction of your life will shift. And oftentimes people think it's, oh, I'm going to be a good person or no, 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 no. There's something that happens within you where things used to make sense. They don't longer make sense. The things that used to excite you, you're just like, why was I into that? When things that used to pull you down, all of a sudden you've got the confidence to say, no, thank you. Things that used to wear you down and stress you out now, all of a sudden are not as a heavy burden as they used to. When you have encountered him, the direction changes. Why? Because you're following in the direction that he wants you to go it's no longer I that lives but him who lives when you have a revelation of him it's clear where the authority is coming from and the direction of your life will definitely change When you have a revelation of him, what used to rule you no longer rules you. This is so key. What used to rule you no longer rules you. This, this, is, this is addictions. This is pride. Money. Sex. Drugs. Whatever used to rule you no longer has the authority and the power to rule over you. It's when you have a revelation of who this God is. That truly there is none like him. None can compare. God all by yourself. You stand alone. Woo! Every knee shall bow. You are God, king, ruler of heaven and earth. God. What used to master and rule over me can no longer have a right of authority over me. The Bible says the donkey saw. If you continue to read the passage, you see that multiple times. Balaam insists on moving forward, even though the donkey is signaling that something is not right in the atmosphere. Not everybody is going to see it like you see it, when you see it, and how you see it. That's why the Bible is clear that you've got to work on your salvation with fear and trembling. See, the donkey was working out its salvation in fear and trembling. It was saying, I don't care if the rest of the world thinks I'm crazy. I don't care if my friends are disowning me. I don't care if I no longer fit your cool status. I don't care if you don't think this is relevant or good for my brand. I don't care if you think that this is going to make me an outcast. What I have seen of this God makes me look in the opposite direction. I will do what this new authority over my life is revealing for me to do. Why are you fasting? Why are you praying? Why are you at church all the time? Why are you buying different translation Bibles? Why are you studying the word so much? See, when you've got a revelation on him, it does not matter what everybody else is doing around you. What you have seen of him is enough to keep you doing exactly what he wants you to do. In verse 24, we see that the angel comes up again. In verse 27, we see that the angel comes up again. And I want to draw your attention, particularly to verse 27. Let's actually take it up to 26. Then the angel of the Lord moved ahead. Somebody underline ahead. And stood in the narrow place where there was no room left to turn. Neither right or left. Watch. The other times 
that the angel of the Lord stood, there was room to run into the field. There was room to press against the wall. Now the angel of the Lord went ahead to a place where there was no room to turn left or right. Let me maybe glance quickly over that. There will come a time in your life where you will have to decide where you lie. Where there will be no room for you to play lukewarm Christianity. Mm. Where there will be no room for you to be one thing on a Sunday and a different thing on a Wednesday. Where there will be no room for you to balance the two lives. Where there will be no room for you to play Christianity. But you will be confronted with your maker. And the question is, is that will you succumb to his instruction or will you pursue to do opposite of what he's asking you? I know right now it seems like you're getting away with it. I know right now it seems like there is no consequence to what you're doing. I know right now it's been 10 years and you've been living that life. I, I know, I know that, that, that God has not said anything. I, I, I know, I know you feel that, listen, this is the one thing that God permits me. I know you think it's just a vice. I, I know you think that, you know, it doesn't apply to you like it applies to everybody else. I know. See, I've heard it all. I know. I even have some of my own. I know. But, but, but what I want to highlight here in verse 26, that there will come a time where the angel of the Lord will stand and you will have to acknowledge that it's either you are for God or you are opposing God. You will have to decide whether this angel is standing to come and fight with you or this angel is sent by God to oppose you. There's going to come a time where you got to choose whether you are for him or against him. Let me move on. In verse 28, then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth. And this is usually where we get excited that if you don't talk, God is going to open the mouth of a donkey. He will use whatever he wants to use to get his message ahead. Great. I love it for us. And that is the truth that God is not bound. He's not waiting for you. Listen, his mandate and his will is going to prevail. Whether you open up your mouth, whether you do what he's asking you to do, God is not desperate. No, no. He is a loving God. If you have to say he desperately loves us. But he himself and his mandate is not stopping because you and I are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. No. That's why the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, but we are lacking workers. His harvest is still plentiful. I hope I'm making sense tonight. I don't want to move too far away from it. Verse 28, then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. Like I said, we usually get excited about this, and, and I think we should. I just want to draw your attention to something. In verse 28, when God opens the mouth of the donkey, watch this, Balaam is not startled by the donkey speaking. I don't know about you, but if I've been riding a donkey and I've been beating it up, and then two hours later, that donkey opens its mouth. Listen, I'm a dog mom. I've got two dogs. I talk to them every day. At no point, at no inkling, do I expect Toto and Lulu to respond and say, actually, that's not what we want to have for lunch. I have no expectation. If they spoke, I would probably never want to see them ever again. I would be startled at the fact that they can respond. But watch, he's not. He's seen the power of God. He knows the power of God. And he is so into himself. He's so into his mission that his irritation of not getting his way is the most important thing in that moment. Watch this. Sometimes God is signaling red flags all around us. Even the things that are not our everyday encounters, we fail to see and recognize that this is God sounding the alarm. But because we're so consumed in our own mission, our own ambition, that even the things that are overtly in front of us, where God is saying, you got to slow down, you got to listen to me you've got to watch out we don't even hear because we're on mission self we're on mission i god is signaling flags he's signaling the alarm he's saying balam you are in a dangerous place god is saying ask about me 
I wipe out nations. I have no tolerance for disobedience. Ask about me. Tread lightly, Balaam. I've sent my angel three times. Now a donkey is speaking. Tread lightly, Balaam. I don't know how many of you, your donkeys are speaking, but you're so engulfed in what you want to do. You're so engulfed in your sin. You're so engulfed in your disobedience that you won't even see the most obvious things that God is saying. Let go. Stop. Don't do that. Reject that. Move away from that because you're on mission, you. Instead, Balaam speaks to the donkey. And even when he speaks to the donkey, he's not alarmed. The first thing he says to the donkey is that you made me a fool. If I had a sword, I would kill you right now is what he says to the donkey. But watch this, the sword that the donkey recognizes is the sword that is held by the angel of the Lord. Balaam, your sword is like a toy knife. Your sword is imaginary, my friend. Compared to what I've seen, you scaring me is nothing, devil. You threatening to take away my wealth is absolutely nothing. You tormenting me is a piece of cake. What I have seen is greater. What I've encountered is more powerful. What I've come to know no is more superior your sword and your staff mean nothing when i've encountered the sword of the angel of the lord he's not startled by him speaking and in verse 29 we recognize that the donkey doesn't recognize his sword in fact all the donkey wants to know is that what have i done to you that you would treat me this way and I think it's important for what we're talking about today. And please hear my heart tonight that I want you to see what the donkey saw. I don't necessarily want you to say what the donkey said. Why? It's because many of us as Christians, we get stuck in saying what the donkey said. We'll get to there. I'm going ahead of myself and never really seeing what he saw. In verse 31, we recognize something. In verse 31, the Bible tells us that then God opened Bilam's eyes. God gave Bilam the privilege he gave the donkey. I want you to hear me. God supernaturally gives Bilam the privilege to see Mm, what the donkey had been seeing all along. This is maybe a quick word for all of you who are worried that you're losing friends. You're worried about your spouse. You're worried about your parents. You're worried about so-and-so and that they're not acknowledging God. Listen, there comes a time when God opens their eyes. Stay faithful. Stay the course. Don't turn away. Verse 31, he opens his eyes. The Bible says, when God opened his eyes, he bowed down low and fell down to his face. It's one thing to have head knowledge of God. It's one thing for you to be in a room of people where God is the conversation. It's one thing to you to bounce in and out of the idea of God. It's even another thing for you to claim Christianity, but it's a completely different life-changing, game-changing experience to have a revelation of him. A deeper sense of knowing him. A personal awakening to who he is. A diluted encounter of the person God in his fullness and in his glory. It's a completely different thing. The minute God opened his eyes, the Bible says he fell to his knees and he fell to his face. It's no longer a dialogue. It's no longer a conversation. It's Lord, behold, him in his majesty and his splendor. God, who am I that you would stand in front of me for me to see your glory? 
This is a message specifically for someone. If you look at verse 33. The apon says, the donkey saw me and turned away from me three times. If it had not turned away. This message doesn't apply to all of us. This is specifically for some. If it had not turned away, I would have certainly killed you and spared the donkey. I want to take you to verse 29. When Balaam answers the donkey, he said, you made me a fool. Write this down. It's the foolish things. It's the foolish things that have saved your life. It's the things you have no regard for that have the potential to save your life. It's the, it's the things you take lightly and don't have time for that can save your life. It's the things that you walk all over that can save your life. It's your Bible that you bought six years ago, nicely tucked in under the cupboard that can save your life. It's you going for prayer and waking up in the morning to seek his face that can save your life. It's you going to a church, being planted and open to being discipled that can save your life. If it's you having the right kind of friends that continue to turn your eyes back to Jesus that can save your life. It's you walking out of that relationship that is cool and Instagrammable, but is slowly decaying your life away that will save your life. It's the little things that we regard foolish, that oftentimes can be the very things that God takes and uses to save you. It's you not getting in a car. It's you listening to the Holy Spirit. It's you leading a quiet life that can save your life. It's the foolish things. I know most of us think the miracle is the donkey speaking. But maybe I came here tonight to employ you to regard the donkey seeing as a greater miracle. I know you want to sound Christian. I know you want them to know that you're Christian. I know you want to be seen and heard and felt and heard. And you, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, 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 know, I know you want to be blessed and highly favored. I, I know, I know, I know. But, but, but there's, a, there's a miracle waiting to happen when only you will allow God to reveal himself to you. I want to argue tonight. That the miracle is not the donkey speaking. The miraculous act is not the donkey speaking. No, it's not even them having a conversation. No, the miracle is the fact that the donkey was able to see the angel of the Lord. See, most of our downfall is that we no longer recognize when God has left us. It's usually the part of the Bible we don't want to read. Samson, Manasseh, there's many where the hand of God leaves, nations where the hand of God leaves. We are unable to see that you are now opposing God himself. So may we see what the donkey saw. May we see what the donkey saw. May we see oof, the importance of doing things God's way. May we see him as God, as ruler, as the final say, as the authority. May we understand that even if the whole world is going in one direction, nothing can make us unsee what we have seen. We've seen his goodness. We've seen his power. We've seen his glory. We've seen his provision. We've seen his kindness. We've seen his mercy. We've seen his kingdom and his kinship and rulership 
We cannot unsee what we've seen. May we see what the donkey saw. And never ask what the donkey asked. Or say what the donkey says. See, most of us as Christians, we'd rather say what the donkey said. A lot of us are stuck in the cycle of speaking like the donkey and not seeing like the donkey. The donkey is saying, what have I done? What have I done, Lord God, for me to lose my job? What have I done, Lord God, to be sick? What have I done, Lord God, for this man to treat me this way? What have I done, Lord God, for me not to pass the degree? We are so fixated on the things that are done to us that we no longer keep our gaze and our eyes on what we have seen. So don't speak like the donkey. See what he saw. Don't be overwhelmed at what is happening around you. See, 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 let me put it like this. Even though the donkey was beaten up three times, the angel of the Lord says, you are the reason that Balaam is not dead. See, I know a lot of things have been coming your way. You are the reason why the company is still standing. You're the reason why God has protected that marriage. You're the reason why God has protected those children. You're the reason why things are still standing the way that they have. I know you've taken a couple of knocks, but God needs you in that space. You're the reason he's kept it because he's aiming to protect and cover you. Don't speak like the donkey. See what the donkey saw. A revelation of his goodness, of his kindness, of his mercy, of his lovingness. That even though Balaam was not listening, mm, even though he was insisting on another direction, the angel of the Lord was not restricted, nor was he powerless. It's because the donkey saw. Mm. That Bilam's life was spared. Don't be talked out of your convictions. Don't be situationed out of your convictions. Don't let anything unsee or force you to unsee what God has revealed of himself. If he's been healer, he can heal again. If he's provided, he can provide again. If he's loved, he loves you still. If he was merciful, he can be merciful again. In fact, he says his mercies are new every single morning. Don't unsee what he's revealed of himself to you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this evening. Oh, we thank you, great king. Song, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Standing in the light of your glory. Aish. Lord God, we want to see you. We don't want circumstances or situations to blur our vision of you. We want to be clear about where the authority comes from. And we want our lives transformed, Lord God. We want to be walking in the direction that you are sending us in. Anything that has ruled over our lives, all the belongs, Lord God, that have been our masters for long. Father God, we change ownership and kingship over to you tonight. We declare you as Lord over our lives, King over our lives, the final and only authority over our lives. Father, we protect our eyes. Help us to see you. Help us have a revelation of who you are. 
Father, we come against anything that will persuade us, lure us in the opposite direction that you want us to be going in. In Jesus' name, we pray. Help us see what the donkey saw. Give us the privilege to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Alrighty, guys, I gotta get out of here. It's a public holiday. The securities are literally waiting for me. We come together tomorrow at 5 a.m. We're still gonna use this as our base, but tomorrow morning we're praying. So I want you to invite a friend. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to meet at 8. We're back again tomorrow at 5 a.m. for prayer. Come. Just come. Mm? And tomorrow is a public holiday, so you can go back to sleep again. So come. Um, yeah, we're grateful to God for this session. We'll see you soon tomorrow morning. Tell a friend. Be safe. And um, don't let anything convince you to unsee. Alrighty. Good night, guys. Love you guys.